Yo, I just want to remind you that you're going to crush it today. Yo, welcome back to the lab. I'm your host, Elias Benjaloon. Join me as we dive into the science behind the hustle of badass entrepreneurs working smarter, not just harder. In every experiment, we're going to dive in on business tactics and life lessons, enjoy some hip hop, and experience a moment of gratitude. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's win this digital revolution together. As always, we're going to kick things off with some dope music, so I'll see you in there. I don't try, just do like Yoda said I move ahead and pursue nothing to it I won to it Combination and strategy punch Kicking it laterally, literally A never ending quantum mechanic battery Fueled from within, finish how I begin With a little more of Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Hustle Science Experiment Today we've got David Miz in the house He is the founder of the email experience Today he's going to talk to us about memes and how that can help your help you grow your business. Dave, it's a pleasure having you here. How about you kick things off by telling us what got you into online entrepreneurship in the first place? Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Um, oh man, this is gonna be quite a conversation. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's see. It was uh, the year was nineteen ninety nine. Okay, I was just four years old. <laughs> so think back. So think back. So think back then, I was like in my mid twenties back then. Yeah, I was like in my mid twenties. I was working. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, yeah, I love it. So I used to do that in, when I was in my like early twenties, and it was really cool, crazy. I got the best sales experience and education ever. But like income wise, like it was like this. Some months it was like this. You know, like if they got the bad stock picks for the clients wrong, then it was like this for months. You know, okay. if they if they got the picks right, and so you know, it was just like chaotic. And so the internet came about like around that time, right? Like the dot com boom, and it was like 2000. I was like, this is crazy. Like, forget this Wolf of Wall Street bullshit. You know, like I was making good money, but it was too much stress. Yeah. And um, I said, you know what? I'm going to learn how to make websites. I walked in the office one day to the uh, of the boss, and um, and I said, look, I'm I'm quitting. I'm going to go learn to make websites. And he looked at me and he was like, are you, are you like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like, did you do drugs or something? Like, what, like what's wrong with you? And um, I'm like, no, I'm serious. I heard an ad on the TV, on the radio when I was driving up to work today. And uh, it was for like the Art Institute. And it was like, learn how to make websites, make 100,000 a year, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, damn, 100,000 a year making websites, way easier than 100,000 a year doing this, like on the phone. Um, so I quit. Uh, and I ended up, you know, long story, I went to school and I didn't go to that school. I went to another school and um, when I was in school, I started teaching myself how to make websites, and, and I found these like uh, people selling products on the internet. Uh, the first guy I found was this guy named Mark Joyner. Um, he's considered now like the, the godfather of internet marketing, uh, and this is like back in the 2000, 2001, um, and so yeah. I kind of like got sucked down the rabbit hole, you know, like um, I was like, God, there's got to be a way to make money on this internet thing. You know, and, and I had no idea back then what to do. So I started learning web, how to make websites and I used that to help me get through school. So I was like freelancing on the side and I was doing these like long sales pages, right? But back then people were using like front page, Microsoft front page, and they were like ugly as fuck websites, right? Really, really ugly stuff. And, you know, like me being a designer, I was like, okay, well, I can make this better looking and maybe make it convert better for you. So like nobody would pay for that. Right, right. Like now it's a different story. Right. So I was doing it back then. I was like not making any money. Um, started getting some clients, started making a little bit more money. And I started asking them what they were doing to make so much money, you know, like, and I would bug the shit out of these guys like all night. Like they would work. I would notice they were all like pretty much working at night, like from like nine o'clock at night to like four in the morning. I would get like messages nonstop. You know, it was like crazy. So I started asking them what they were doing and uh, when I was doing this, I, um, I had a client who was a very, very big internet marketer at the time. His name is Armand Morin, and he invited me to his seminar. It was in Los Angeles at the time. And I remember this very, very vividly. I was like, kind of like at the end of my rope. Like I wasn't making much money. I wasn't okay. really able to, to support myself at that point. And it was like, should I get off the pot, right? So I went to like Vistaprint back then. I got like the free business cards. I bought like a stack. Oh yeah, with me. Ones with the logo in the back. Well, I made my own. I made my own. Okay. It was like um, 
does your website suck? Question mark. You know, I can help you. And it was like my website, you know, let me know. And so I went to this seminar and I was like in shock. Uh, it was like the first time I've seen so many people like that were into this internet thing, like internet marketing thing, you know, like there was like four or 500 people in the room. Um, so wow. this is like the end of 2004, like October, 2004 ish. And, um, this client of mine was the one who was hosting the seminar at the end. He said, um, make sure you're in the room at the end. And I was like, okay, so I'm standing all the way in the back of the room. I'm, you know, by myself, you know, like I've got like all my business cards in my, in my pockets and everything like, you know, just kind of like a dork. And, um, I'm like, okay, like, he didn't, you know, he said, just be in the room. Okay. How many people in here need a website? And like 500 people like raised their yeah. hand. There's only one person I've ever used and he's in the back of the room and he like points and like the spotlight comes on me. Like, Shh. and I was just like, Oh shit. And like, remember this is like 2004. There's no click yeah. funnels. There's no WordPress. Like designer is like a media buyer back then. Like the right. designer back then was like, you, you were like, the, the top of the shit people were like jumping over the chairs i remember it was like a fucking tsunami it, it, it was like zombies like were coming at me like that's crazy i was just giving business cards like crazy i gave out like 500 business cards the whole thing was gone like within an hour um and that like totally set my business up from from the design stuff but at that time i was learning about um you know the marketing stuff i was doing online dating for myself right? okay like for my personal life, I was spending yeah. so much time in school on the computer. I was like, Fuck, you know, so I started doing online dating and I got really, really good at it to the point where like none of my friends would ever see me. I was either working or I was going out on a date. Okay. And you got that I, systematized too. I had it all systematized and it was to the point where like I would go to the same bars and the bartender, the, the bouncers would like pull me over and think I was dealing drugs because oh, like every night I was yeah. having a different girl. It was, it was crazy. And so I kind of put one and one together. And I said, maybe there's a market for this, like, you know, and because the reason why is I had friends of mine start asking me, like, what are you doing all of a sudden? Are you like selling cocaine or something? Or are you selling drugs? Like, right. So I started explaining to them what I was doing and I started teaching it to them and they started getting results. Then all of a sudden, like their friends. So like your friend that I've never met before, you would give him your, my info and he would start calling me or like hit me up. My friend, like it, this whole word of mouth thing just went, started going viral it for you. It started going viral. Like it, it just went crazy. So like your friend, you would give your friend my number and say, and he would call me up and be like, hey, just man, like a drug so dealer. So. Pretty much. And like, hey, I'm, I'm friends with so and so. He told me you were like awesome with online dating. He let you ho hook them up. Can you show me what you're doing? And I started doing this. It started happening like crazy. And so I knew at this point, like, okay, I got to make a product out of this. Okay. So I put one and one together and. I made a product and back then, I, you know, I'm working on a Mac because I'm a designer and there's no Camtasia. Well, there's, there's Camtasia. That was the only screen capture software and it only worked on a PC. Okay. So I was like, shit, who do I know that has a PC because I'm not, I don't you know, I don't have like a pot to piss in at this point, you know, um, I'm not buying it. I don't, can't buy another computer. I use a Mac. There's nothing that works. So I find one of my best friends has a PC. He's out partying and I'm literally at his house at his apartment like making these videos i burn yeah. it on a cd and i have a friend that i was i was on these online forums at the same time and i had a friend who was working for a guy and the guy had this website called doubleyourdating.com okay and back then that was like the, the 800 pound gorilla they were doing like 20 million dollars a year selling mm -hmm. dating products and my, this friend of mine was doing like customer support and stuff like that for him. And he said, I told him what you were doing and he wants to interview you just kind of like what we're doing right now. Cool. So we do, we do this interview and he says, I'm going to get it out like in a few months. I'll let you know, I'll give you a heads up. And you know, cause at the end I promoted my website. Okay. But I didn't even have a website. I just kind of promoted the website I thought I was going to have. Um, so two weeks later, like Saturday morning, I'm hungover. Uh, I like check my email. I had like 900 messages. Oh man. All from that like, interview. I didn't know. I was like, I was like in shock. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And they were all from this interview and they all basically said the same thing. Like in one way or another, they said, I heard the interview. I went to the website at the end of the interview and there was nothing there. So I messaged like a bunch of these guys back. I'm like, okay, what interview? What website? <laughs> Because they oh, told me yeah, you know, a yeah. few months. 
Right. And this is like two weeks, like no shit, like two weeks. And I was like, I got the messages back and it was like, yeah, this interview, uh, this website, I was like, oh shit. I hope I registered the domain name, <laughs> you know, like, so I, I, I spent all weekend, like in, in my apartment, like just putting everything together and, um, boom, like launched it. I just had a squeeze page and I was just collecting emails because I didn't yeah. have a product yet. So, you know, I kind of like skipped steps here. So I didn't have a product yet. So I was building this list. And when I, by the time I finished the product and sent it off to, to you know, to, to be made and everything, I had a list of 1,788 people. Okay. And I remember this number exactly. And I kept sending these emails to the list. Right. And the only reason I was sending these emails was because I had to stall them because I didn't have a product. Right. And you didn't want them to go away. Right. I didn't want them to get cold. And I was like, shit, this is like hot leads. I don't want to like ruin my, like shoot my load here. So I got to like make sure I keep them. And I was stalling. I was like, the product is coming. It's coming. And yeah. every email I kept, it's coming. I promise it's coming. And they were like messaging me. When is it coming? When is it coming? Right. You know, and I'm like, I was like doing this product launch without knowing I was doing it, you know, and I was just, it was like stall tactics. Mm. So I'm stalling, I'm stalling, I'm stalling. And I finally have this date and I launch and it just goes nuts. Right. I, even with my shitty sales letter that I wrote, um, it, we did like $39,000 the first day. Um, nice. and I ended up doing like a hundred grand the first month. And at that point I had like $2,000 to my name. Okay. So I was like, I was on cloud nine. I was like, this is totally going to change my life. Right. And I remember like telling my parents and my parents didn't even like flinch until I told them like for that day, like, I think it was like when I made like 15 or 16,000 at that day, I was like, dad, I made like 15, 16,000. He was like, what, what are you doing? Are you selling drugs or something? Like, you know, yeah. um, so he didn't even register the like numbers until then. Um, but then, so I'm on cloud nine here and it's like April, 2005. And then three weeks after this, my dad's diagnosed with stage four cancer. So <laughs> like, wow. so talk about life kind of like throwing you curveballs there. Right. So yeah. on one hand, I'm experiencing like the dream of what you work as an entrepreneur, what you like work for so hard. Right. And then on the other hand, boom, like it's my dad, you know, everything I was doing was for my dad or was, you know, for my parents. So that was a really difficult time. man. you know, it was a really difficult time. It was, my dad was sick for about two and a half years. So the whole time this business was yeah. like a rocket ship going up, you know, like mentally my head was like so far up my ass. Um, you know, I didn't have the mental capacity to really grow it as, as big as it could. Um, you know, and, but it, I learned a lot of really valuable life lessons, you know, in, in that time. So it was, um, yeah, it was a really good experience overall, even though it, you know, could have been better. Yeah, but it, you know, it was a really good experience. I ended up, uh, you know, doing probably three or four million dollars off of the dating offer. It, it's been running for thirteen years now. Nice. And, um, yeah, and so I, I got really good at email, right? So online dating was email, right? I was really good at getting girls to respond to my emails, getting phone numbers, getting dates, you know, etc. And I used that same kind of methodology to use that to selling products, and it yeah. worked really well when I tweaked it to sell products. And so, you know, I kind of like stumbled onto something there and I just kept kind of, you know, using it in different incarnations and in different forms. Definitely. You know? And so from there I started a golf offer and, um, yeah, so that was like one of the top click bank, uh, golf offers. And, um, you know, obviously now we have the, uh, the agency, the email experience, email. It's the constant thing throughout. Yeah. And it kind of comes down to something, um, you know, that like email is built on anyways, which is the relationship building. And so mm -hmm. the same tactics that get you on dates and get people, you know, these days to swipe right and to message you back are the same tact, you know, relatively the same kind of tactics that you would use in sales, right? You know, don't send a dick pic. Don't send a sales offer in the first message, right? Like build a relationship, be funny which leads us to, you know, how people can be using memes for their business. And, and actually, before we get into that, Dave, that's a wild, crazy freaking story. And it's incredible. I, I'm happy I, I met you and, and met an online entrepreneur from the 90s, because sometimes I wonder, too, uh, what it would be like to uh, have maybe been born maybe 10 or 20 years ago and kind of gone through that dot-com boom and uh, what the parallels are for the booms that we're going through today because we're still going through our own sorts of 
booms in the digital revolution, but they're way different than the dot com boom. Uh, but cra- crazy nonetheless. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. When you said that, it just kind of reminded me of something like I remember like the dot com boom, like when I first I got my like this laptop and I was trying to use the internet and you know, back then it was like spam and porn and all that stuff and pop ups. And I remember like going onto this one website and it was like the endless pop up. So oh, like, if yeah. you want to know what it was like, it was like 300 <laughs> pop ups and it just keeps coming and you're just like, no. Days before ad block. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank God. Thank God for, so for that stuff. After, you know, 10 plus years of experience in email marketing and kind of, you know, finding your footing there, like uh, you said that today's business tactic that we're going to talk about is memes. Like, where is the connection? Like, how do you go from like, I guess I could kind of see it, but how about you fill in, fill in the, the blanks? So everybody's been asking me about these memes. So I figured, you know, like it's, it's probably just something good to, uh, to talk about. So how did it get started? So like I started my agency and I suck at paid traffic. Okay. I like, I suck at that legion and traffic. That's just not my thing. Right. Like everybody finds their thing that they're good at. Right. Like, and I'm going to admit like, that's just not my thing. Right. So I love Photoshop and I, I always do these memes to my friends and I use these, like I do these like face swaps. So I'll take like my face and I'll put it on a totally different picture and it, it looks like totally real, but um, I'm using like my friends pictures and stuff. And it's like this hysterical thing that we've been doing for, for a couple of years now. And I started doing these memes for my agency, right? Like I would find a picture and I would just kind of like whip something up. And I noticed that every time I would do it, people would just go nuts, right? Like on Facebook, I would just start getting a lot of responses, comments. People were like, oh, this is fucking awesome. But more than that, I would actually get people reaching out to me, like DMing me like crazy, wanting to find out what I'm doing, what's going on. Um, you know, they, I checked the, your website, like how do I sign up, you know? So every time I started doing this, I would notice like, boom, boom, boom. Um, and so I was like, shit, man, maybe I'm onto something here. And so I started, you know, Gary Vee always says, if it's working, like double down. Even one of my uh, previous clients, Frank Kern, one of my mentors, he says, you know, like, what's the best sales process? The one that's already working for you, right? Yeah. So I was like, duh, like that's what Frank would say. Like I always think like, what would Frank say? What would Gary Vee say? Well, Frank would say, you know, if, the best sales process is the one that's already working for you. So that's the one that was working for me. So I just doubled down on it and just started making more. So I went for a period where I was just cranking them out. And like, I noticed when I stopped making them for a few months, like business was new business was just kind of like at a little bit of a lull. Okay. Right. And I noticed when I picked it back up again, boom, you know, like we started just started getting clients again, like left and right. And so I was like, Hmm, interesting. So I, I want to test this idea actually on running ads with it, um, but I want to do it in terms of like uh, more of like a sequential kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that's that, that's kind of where I'm going with it, um, you know, where I'm trying to go with it. But obviously, you know, I suck at paid ads, so I'm gonna just experiment and have fun with it. And that's like the, the whole thing. Like I'm not doing it for anybody else. I was doing it for my for my own self amusement, you know. Yeah. So like at the end of the day, like if it didn't work, it, like I didn't give a shit. Like I was just having fun with it, anyways. The yeah. fact that it like got business and everybody else liked it, like that's just you know gravy. I yeah, I've seen the whole you know leveraging memes kind of pick up in a couple different like online communities, and uh, I don't think it's you know being capitalized the way it could be yet. Mm-hmm. But since you mentioned Gary Fee, something that did pop to mind was um, owning your own media, like becoming your own media and uh, mm-hmm. producing content just to get and get, you know, just to deliver value, even if it's not the same old business, educational, inspirational, transformational type of value. And it's just funny stuff that people go to the internet for in the first place a lot of the time. Yeah. It makes you seem real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely real. that's what people want. Like it's social media, like they want to see that you're a real person. Right. You know, like when you said Amsterdam, I was like, shit, I wonder where he's at. I didn't yeah. think about business stuff. Like, you know, like I was like, damn, I wonder where he's going, but you know, like where he is. Yeah, and no, I'm, it makes I'm, connection. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's cool because like you, know, this whole concept of like marketing to your target customer and marketing to people who are in, in e-commerce who are in need of email, like all of your memes kind of hit on those pain points. So you're having fun all day, like poking pain points for people in a fun way. And that's driving you. And then there's some, and then there's like towards the last few that I've done, I've done like self depreciating humor. Oh, really? There's like one, there's one where I have like, there there was like an eye roll 
and it's like, you know, Dave telling you that you should add like 10 to 30 percent to your email and then like you and it's like, ugh, like yeah. enough already, you know, right. Um, but it, it's so, meta and it's funny. Yeah, and it's kind of, you know, just kind of like cheeky like that. And, and it works. I mean, you know, but the strange thing, you've got to do it on the right site. So I do these memes on Instagram <laughs> and I don't get anywhere near as as much uh, action, not just from engagement, but like in terms of actually people business wise reaching out. So maybe that's just the market that I'm in. You don't get uh, much on Instagram, you said, or like, because I, I see you do it on Facebook. Well, I, I, I do the same memes on Instagram, but like, you know, and people will like and, and stuff like that. But like the engagement on Instagram, I notice at least for now is totally different. Like Facebook is real people. Instagram seems to be more yeah. um, bots replying back. And then the actual people messaging me back on Facebook, at least for my market, maybe in certain markets, maybe it's a little bit, it'll different, but um, you know, for, for me, I don't think that's, I don't think that's really hit yet for that market. Um, for sure. So you got to do it on the right site. That's obviously the next, uh, the next thing. But like, if you, I, I think of it like the AIDA, remember like that formula? Yeah. Like attention. Interest to the, so like the memes capture people's attention. Right. Yeah. And like when people are scrolling down the newsfeed and all they see is like, you know, your, your long post pitching something or, you know, like your, whatever your self help kind of picture oh, image, kind of whatever. Thing, yeah. And then they see like some random thing like that. And then they're like, what the fuck? Like, what is this shit? Boom. It captures their attention. And it kind of lets you drop in your little message. So if you notice, I'm always kind of using my same message, like add another yeah. 10 to 30% to your store's revenue. You can't scale without email. That's the thing. You can't scale. You can't scale. You can't scale. So I'm hitting those things. Yeah. I had a really good conversation on branding with uh, Mike Young earlier today, right before this. And we were talking about, you know, setting up like your, you know, what your brand really stands for and the messages and the stories that you're going to be sharing through your content and then kind of going back into that and making sure that everything is on brand. So you kind of hit the nail on its head with that. Like these are the three main things, main pain points or like main things you want people to, um, to know about your service or know about uh, working with you or kind of like the, it's really the tip of the iceberg because from there it kind of goes into commenting and liking and seeing your face over and over again until that eventually turns into a message right um, once they see that you know then that's that's when they started looking at what you're doing and stuff and then you know that allows you to shift gears you know yeah. like if you so if you just stay with the memes it's like overkill right oh it's no common. yeah yeah. It's kind of like dating. What we used to teach, you know, guys, even with women, also, if you're, let's say you're going out on a date and you're, let's say, on a first date, you know, like the big mistake people make is they have their first date and they stay there for like three hours in one place. And it's like, ugh, you know, it feels like 10 hours. So what we used to teach people is, you know, stay there for a drink and go to another place for another drink. And like that yeah. kind of like bouncing from one place to another, it kind of like freshens things up a little bit. Right. And, and that's kind of allows you to shift gears. Um, you know, so you want to do that with this stuff as well, you know, like AIDA, you know, don't overkill yeah. with the memes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And, and totally. I want to kind of segue this now into the moment of gratitude, um, which is, you know, have this because so many people, and we see this all the time on social media, especially are looking for outside validation, um, and always looking for like, especially in the entrepreneur space, like how many more sales can I get? How much more business can I get? Like, what else can I get as opposed to just you know expressing gratitude and being happy for everything that you've gotten and so this is a reminder for everybody to you know, have that moment of gratitude today how about you kick things off today dave and tell us what you're feeling particularly grateful for well i, I will say that and um, I'll, I'll tell you that but there was interesting something that you said it was all about getting right people are always talking about yeah. what, they, what they want to get so they're in the mindset of not having and we teach this a lot. And one of my, I have a, a friend of mine that teaches this stuff a lot with uh, mindset. And it's all about, you know, when you're in the mindset of trying to get something, that means you, you don't have something. When you don't have something, you want to get something. So you have to imagine yourself as already having it. And then you're never wanting anything, you know. So, um, so just a little kind of like reframe on, on, that, on that stuff. So as far as gratitude. Um, Love it. This was really, really cool, actually. It's, you know, I, I always think like life's kind of like comes like full circle when you have like different moments and stuff. And um, it was 2004 
and I went to this internet marketing seminar. I'm in Miami, and I went to this internet marketing seminar in Orlando. And this is 2004. It was right before I went full time, right? Okay. And I had the worst weekend of my life at that seminar. Like my girlfriend broke up with me in Orlando. It was like horrible. Oh man! So, but I was at this. But I was at this seminar, and I met this guy like in the hallway. He was from Orlando, and uh, we struck up a conversation, you know, and we kept in touch. Long story short. Uh, this guy uh, turned out to be like one of the biggest internet marketers in the industry. <laughs> like little did I know, right? Um, his name was John Reese. Nice. Okay? And in our industry, this is the first guy in the internet marketing history to do a million dollars in 24 hours. Okay. Wow. He was like the Roger Bannister of our industry. Once some people saw that he was actually able to do this, like then it was just people started doing it and, you know, doing bigger numbers and bigger numbers and bigger numbers. And, um, when I launched my dating site, um, you know, I always leaned on him for help and he was a genius with traffic and marketing and, um, testing. He was like the only person talking about split testing back then. He had a very famous course called traffic secrets. And this is the course that did the, the million dollars. And in that course, he talked about split testing and he started teaching it and stuff like that. And now, I mean, everybody you know, talks about split testing, but back then nobody was, this is like, you know, new kind of stuff. So I always leaned on him for, uh, for help and stuff like that. And if it wasn't for him, there's no way I wouldn't have been able to do, uh, the numbers that I did, you know, the 39,000, you know, the hundred thousand, you know, three or $4 million from this offer yeah. uh, stuff like that. And nice. so, um, it life's really full circle. So I actually had lunch with him two days ago. Is he still in Orlando? He, 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 you know, he's traveled around and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, so I actually had lunch with him here in Miami and, um, Ooh. yeah, so um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. And it was just really, really cool to, um, you, know, to you know, we reconnected after, you know, I haven't seen him in a few years and, wow. um, we've always stayed in touch and, um, you know, just really, really awesome to just kind of like life's kind of you know, full circle like that. You know, he was like my original mentor in, in the space. You know, he was like the first guy that was, I ever met that was like rich, like making money doing this stuff, you know, like when you see it for real, then it's, it becomes real to you. You know, like right. when you see people on Facebook, you know, doing well, or you, you see people on Instagram driving like balling in cars and stuff. It's cool. And you know, you, it's cool now, but remember back then there was no Instagram or Facebook or any of that. Shit, yeah. You know? And so you hear it about actually seeing them when you're at someone's house, like, and they're in a freaking like mansion and they're driving like a brand new Porsche turbo. And you're like, Holy shit. Like we're almost, a, you're a little bit older than me and you're doing this internet thing and, you know, like you only dream about that, that stuff back then, you know? So awesome. really cool, man. Really, really cool. Oh yeah. So moment of appreciation goes to all the mentors out there um, that like have shown us the way and it's our job to kind of pay it forward and continue to mentor the others that, you know, that are hungry for this and like are, are out there getting it. So I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Uh, this kind of takes us now to the life lesson of the day. You know, like I say, you're the teacher for this episode. What is, you know, just one, you know, one life lesson that, you know, comes to mind that uh, you want to share with our audience today? You know, when my dad was sick, it really, I had a really crazy time, you know, um, and it, it allowed me to experience things that very few people, I think, would get to experience just from uh, like the extremes that things were on. Like I had the hot, one of the hottest offers on the internet back then and like was going through the craziest, worst personal stuff that you could go through like the extremes. And it really taught me to, I stopped giving a shit about a lot of things, right? Like a lot of things that I thought were really important in life. Really when I, when I was in that, that pressure cooker, didn't yeah. really matter, you know, and it, I really, like that's what? one of the reasons why I kept going to Amsterdam. Like I, I, it helped me to like detox and deep, you know, like decompress, you know, I'd walk around the streets and stuff and it was, it was so different. It was so peaceful and relaxing, you know, and, um, it, it allowed me to really think about just life, you know? And so one of the things I really learned was, and I really kind of like got in my head was really like going with the flow, right? Like going with the current of the river. Okay. Many different ways you can kind of say that, but there's often times in life where you're, you're, you feel like you're kind of going against the river. You're kind of like swimming upstream. Everything yeah. seems difficult. 
And it, it's kind of sometimes life's way of telling you maybe you're not doing the right thing, you know? And when you're in the zone, people always say like, I'm, I'm in the zone, right? When you're in the zone, things are flowing, right? You're going with the current. Everything seems kind of easy. You don't really have to do much. You know, you're in your zone of genius, right? And all these things are kind of like flow, right? Um, yeah. You know, in, in like NLP type stuff, you talk about psychology, you call it like state, right? In dating, we teach like state control, like controlling your state around a pretty girl, for example. If you're in a room full of models, you know, and you're like, you've never been around women, you're probably going to be like, Rah, you know? So you have to like mentally prepare your mind for that kind of stuff. So yeah, like stop focusing on all this shit that, it's not really important and really try to like get in that flow. Right. Like don't waste your time on if, if it's, if it's kind of like a struggle for you, like, yeah. And, and to, to kind of like illustrate this. So before starting the agency, I had a, an email tracking software and I was selling it through webinars and it was selling. Okay. It was doing okay. Um, but I noticed like not a lot of people were logging in and actually using it after they were buying it, which sucks because I can't get the feedback that I need to, you know, reiterate and make the software better. And what I noticed that was, I was kind of like swimming upstream, swimming upstream, trying to get JV partners, swimming upstream, trying to get the webinar converting better, swimming upstream, getting the software better. It, everything was like a struggle, right? Yeah. And the way I started my agency, it literally just kind of like happened like this. I met a guy locally who was from the same country as my wife. My wife's from a small little country in South America called Uruguay. And I met this guy in one of the Facebook marketing groups. He's from Uruguay and he lived like 15, 20 minutes from me. So nice. we met on Facebook, chatted, she chatted, and um, we met at Starbucks a couple of times. Real nice guy. We had a good vibe and he wasn't really making any money back then. And, but my real nice guy. And we just, you know, like when you're, you're on the path with somebody, you know, like just good vibe. Fast forward, he starts doing e commerce. And he's doing like fifty thousand dollar days. Okay. Nice. That's but I noticed that he's not doing an email. And so I said, Hey, well, let me let me write up some emails for you. So I wrote up three emails and we put it in a store. And six months later he messages me and says, Hey dude, remember those emails you wrote the other like a few months back? Three hundred thousand dollars in sales. Can you like write the rest of these for my store? And so I was like, hmm, okay. Let me start the agency. So that's yeah. kind of how the agency started. It was just kind of like going with the flow. Right. As opposed, I was talking, you know, like somebody else about this earlier too. It's kind of like the things that are draining your energy take a time suck that are extremely hard and difficult for you to do. And you probably shouldn't be doing them, especially if you're trying to build a business because it's an opportunity cost, a huge opportunity cost because it's taking away your energy when you could also just, hand it off to somebody else or find the other things that are more important in your business. Like for me, the things that can be in flow are these kind of conversations, like my podcast and then my consultations. And that's what I love to do. Talk to people, help people provide some value. And, um, and so I'm trying to do much more of that and outsource all of the rest. I love outsourcing, you know, for, uh, you know, so remember I grew up doing web design. Yeah. Right. I taught myself how to code and all that stuff, but I realized that, I, I enjoy doing it, but I suck at it. Okay. <laughs> like I can admit I suck. I'm a ghetto coder. I'm horrible and it takes too much time and it's frustrating, yeah. but I, you know, like you, you know, ego gets in the way. Like I can do it. I can do it. I stopped doing all that shit. I just outsourced it and it just freed up my time and my stress level. You yeah. Know, it didn't save me any hair, but I mean, you know, it saved me a lot of stress. So, you still, you still have some. Hair, the, yeah, <laughs> you you saved it. You 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 got out right in time. I'm holding out hope for uh, some kind of like medical, you know, technology or something. Right. Well, you'll probably see an offer to you through a Facebook ad and a landing page. When I know, program. right? So. I, I think I saw those Facebook ads with the uh, the laser, the red laser, the helmet. Uh, there's no way that's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't 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 drop two grand on that, please. No, man. No. Dude, Dave, thank you so much, man. Is there any, like, uh, you know, this is your moment to plug. If you, there's a way for people to get in touch with you or if you want to point people a certain way, go for it right now and we'll drop any links in the in the blog and all that. Oh, I'm going to hit them with, like, the craziest sales pitch, man. You know, so check me out on Instagram, at Dave Miz, or on Facebook, Dave Miz, same thing. Check me out there. You can oh, see yeah. all the memes there too, man. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Uh, it's a top of funnel. Let me know stuff. which ones you like. Let me know All which right, ones I'll you like. Alright, I'll give it a try. Go! Cool. Try awesome, not. Dave. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. There is no try. I don't try, just do. I don't try, just do. I don't try, just do. Like Yoda said, I move ahead and pursue. Get it, yeah. I don't try, just do. Get it, yeah. I don't try, just do. I don't try, just do like Yoda said. I move ahead in pursuit, trying to do too much at once. Break it down. Take my time, break it down. No rush, feeling flush because of the must. My ambition got me working harder than most. Focus in, 90 minute increment, get it in. Then rest, I'm getting back to it, back to it, uh, again and again and again. Yeah, routine, discipline, my friends, let the games begin. I don't try, just do, get it, yeah. I don't try, just do. I don't try, just do. Like Yoda said, I move ahead and pursue, get it, yeah. I don't try, just do, sing it, yeah. I don't try, just do. I don't try, just do. Like Yoda said, I move ahead and pursue, nothing to it. I won to it. Combination of strategy, punch, kicking it laterally, literally. A never ending quantum mechanic battery. Fueled from within, finish how you begin with a little more oomph. Out on the road, searching for home, need a bunk. No place to lay my head, any decision, regret, let it go. There's power in moving fast and power in moving slow. I don't try, just do, get it here. I don't try, just do. I don't try, just do, like Yoda said. I move ahead and pursue, get it here. I don't try, just do, get it here. I don't try, just do. I don't try, just do, like Yoda said. I move ahead and pursue. Campaign for the mission, rendezvous, so much to do. Turn in, I dip, rampage, I sip a little bit of poison Spit from the venom of a snake pit Choking on tire fumes I don't do, I don't do what I'm supposed to do Just drink water, read, write, breathe Drink my shiitake mushrooms, get out of my room We need more space to breathe I don't try, I just do I don't try, I just do I don't try, I just do Like Yoda said, I move ahead and pursue Like Yoda said Fear is the path to the dark Fear is the path to the dark side Train yourself to lose Everything that you fear to lose Pardon my jargon, I just might lose it Pardon my jargon, jogging, fog in the whip Youngsters, young stars, youngsters I don't try, I just do Adopt the motto, baby, you can live it too Living the party hard won't get you very far You fail because you don't believe I don't try, I just do and succeed Intention plus action equals magic Please don't do it just for the fashion Turn my spark to a flame Bring light to a lampshade Loosen my shoes Live in my own world, everything is gonna be alright Okay, tighten my shoes, lacing my boots Building up an army, I don't try, I just do I don't try, I just do